Rich Dad Poor Dad is an awesome book and it has been famous ever since 1997 and it is authored by Robert Kiyosaki and I'm sure you've know him. Now the question is what are the lessons that we can learn from that book? It's actually very simple and there are four major philosophies that you can acquire while reading the book. Hi guys, Jan here and welcome to The Present. In this channel, we pump out content regarding business, finance, and life development in order for us to live a fruitful life. So this specific video is all about like the book review of Rich Dad Poor Dad. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Rich Dad Poor Dad is a true story of Robert Kiyosaki growing up with his two fathers. His real dad, he calls him or he labels him as the poor dad while his best friend's dad, he labeled him as the rich dad. The main difference about these two dads is how they think, their mindset towards finances, their mindset towards life, and their mindset towards business. Throughout his entire years of working with his rich dad, there are a lot of philosophies that he learned, but in this video, we're going to talk about the four major philosophies. Here we go. Philosophy number one, I don't work for money. Money works for me. Tony Robbins once said that money is a bad master but a good servant. But usually, or what usually, what often happens in the real world is that people make the money as their master by working every single day for that, not for growth, not for prosperity, not for enjoyment of their life, but to acquire a lot of money thinking that it's going to solve the problem, which is not. <laughs> so that's his philosophy number one. He doesn't work for money, money works for him. Philosophy number two, know the difference between an asset and liability. Simply put, Asset puts money into your pocket while liability takes money out of your pocket. But every single thing that you're going to acquire in your life, it may be a house, it may be a car, it may be a, a laptop, it may be a business, it can either be an asset or a liability. It depends on the cash flow, it depends on the situation. For example, if you bought a car for the sole purpose of having it rented out, it becomes an asset because it is producing income by itself and it can cover up his own expenses like repairs and maintenance. However, if you bought a car so that you can travel from your, work, from your house to your workplace and vice versa, that car becomes a liability. The asset in that situation is you and your job because you are producing the cash to pay for that car. It is not paying for itself. Get it? Philosophy number three, your house is not an asset. Think about it. Every single one of us, including me, I also want to have my own house in the future. However, we also have to understand that when we have a house, we need to maintain it. If you have a beautiful house, you have to pay the electric bill so that it's lit. And then you also have to pay the water bill so that you can take a shower, you can wash the dishes, you can wash your clothes and all of that. All of those things are not assets. All of those things are liabilities because it takes money out of your pocket. Therefore, your house is really not an asset in terms of finances, but it is an asset when it comes to your convenience. Get it? Going back to philosophy number two, it depends on the situation. Philosophy number four, learn to manage systems, people, and cash flow. Let's start with the systems. When you have a system, the purpose of the system is for your organization to run with or without you. And so if you are working in your business all the time, working in, not on, you are self-employed. You're actually, you're making that business your boss. But if you're working on the business, that means you have a really good system that's working for you. Going back to philosophy number one, you don't work for money, money works for you. And that money is produced by your systems as well. Learn to manage people. The systems are in place to help you make your life better. It is for your operations to run efficiently and effectively. However, those systems will not work without people. 
And so when the people are there to work on the system, to work in the system rather, it is for you to know how they're going to use the system in order for them to have a better like lifestyle as well. Like it's easier for them to work. Number three is learn to manage cash flow. Cash flow is cash flowing into your business. Wow. <laughs> yes, it is basically the money that's coming in and that's coming out. Here's one tricky characteristics of money. The purpose of money is not to be stagnant. The purpose of it, it has to flow. It is from the word cash flow, it has to move because when it moves, it generates more revenue, it generates more cash flow. When you have these three things, systems, people, and cash flow, you have a solid business.